Let's talk a little about inference for two means. And an example here, we have blood lead levels for random samples of Egyptian police officers. This group over here are traffic officers in Cairo, and this group over here are officers from the suburbs. And the variable of interest here is this lead concentration in the blood. And it appears as though, if we look at this, that the Cairo officers seemingly have a, a larger blood lead level concentration than those in the suburbs. And we might want to investigate that a little bit further. Is that a real difference. And so we phrase things in certain ways. We might ask ourselves, is there a significant difference between the groups? Is there strong evidence that those two groups actually have different population mean blood lead levels? It's a very common question that we ask. And also, we see if we can estimate that difference in population means mu1 minus mu2 with a confidence interval. And we estimate the difference in population means mu1 minus mu2 with the difference in the sample means x1 bar minus x2 bar. And so if we want to do any statistical inference techniques, we need to know something about the sampling distribution of x1 bar minus x2 bar. Suppose we have independent random samples from the populations, and we have normally distributed populations, and at first we're going to think here that we know sigma 1 and sigma 2, so these are the population standard deviations. It'd be a very rare case where we actually do know those, and so we're going to have to do something a little bit different, because in the real world we don't know what those are. But at first, we're going to pretend that we know them because that is a useful starting point for us. Now, under those assumptions, well, we have that the mean of the sampling distribution of x1 bar minus x2 bar is actually mu1 minus mu2. Or in other words, on average, x1 bar minus x2 bar equals mu1 minus mu2, or that x1 bar minus x2 bar is an unbiased estimator of this quantity. Now that's true regardless of independence, regardless of normality. We don't need independence or normality for this part here to be true. For the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the difference in the sample means, in order for this to be true, we need the independence. So this is true if those two samples are independent. And if we also have normality, then the sampling distribution is normal. And so we're in pretty good shape now. We know that our estimator, x1 bar minus x2 bar, is normally distributed, if we have this normality assumption, if that's uh, correct. And we know that it's an unbiased estimator of the quantity of interest. And we know it's standard deviation. So we can do our regular inference techniques. So we're going to have our confidence interval for our difference in population means, and we're going to set this up in a very, very similar way to one sample problems. We're going to start with our best guess of this quantity, and our best guess is simply the difference in the sample means. And we're going to add and subtract a z value times the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of this. That's all. So our estimator plus and minus a z value times the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the estimator. Very, very, very often we want to carry out this hypothesis test that the difference in the population means is equal to zero or equivalently that the population means are equal. This is the question of interest very, very frequently in the real world, so that is the test that we want to carry out. And this uh, test statistic should look quite similar as well. We take our estimator of this quantity, we subtract the hypothesized value, so we could really put minus zero here in the numerator. I could put minus zero because that's my hypothesized value, but it's just minus zero, so I just forget about that. And I divide by the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of my estimator. So it's really the same idea, the same logic that we've been flowing through for, uh, for some time in one sample problems. And if, suppose, a much rarer case, but if we wanted to test that the difference in population means was equal to 5 or minus 40 or minus pi by 2 or whatever, we'd simply subtract that hypothesized value in the numerator. But by far, most common, we want to test this, or equivalently, that they are equal. But, 
I'm not going to do an example here because we don't usually do it this way because we don't know the true standard deviations of our population. I don't know sigma 1. I don't know sigma 2. How am I going to know sigma 1 and sigma 2 if I don't know mu 1 and mu 2? It's a rare case. Might happen, but very rare case. So we're not typically going to do it like this. Now, in the one sample case, we simply replaced the population standard deviation with the sample standard deviation and called it a T. But problem number two. Replacing sigma 1 and sigma 2 with the sample standard deviations does not actually result in a t distribution. We have a bit of a problem now, one of the classic problems in statistics. And so we have a couple of workarounds. If we're going to assume normality, if that's reasonable, then we have two things that we do. One, we can use this pooled variance t procedure, and that's going to need the assumption that the population variances are equal. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, but if we don't feel comfortable assuming that the population variances are equal, we can have another approximate procedure, sometimes called the Welch T procedure. Not truly exactly a T procedure, but approximately so. And we will look at these in more detail uh, a little bit later on. If we don't feel comfortable assuming normality, there are some other things that we can do, some non-parametric procedures as well, but these are the two common ones if we feel comfortable assuming normality.